Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And yeah, that was a pretty pimped out Sony FS5. In fact, it's the Sony FS5 with RAW upgrade, Convergent Design's Odyssey 7Q Plus combination monitor and 4K recorder, the only one in the market actually, which will take the Sony FS5 RAW stream. It has the upgrade bundle as well. The Anton Bauer uh, Cine 150 battery, which powers the Zacuto I, the third in the Gradical series. Very interesting piece of kit, we'll talk about that. And then a pile of Zacuto gear so that it all hangs together so that I don't have to sweat it, I don't have to worry about things coming loose. Now, the raw review actually I'm pushing into the middle of September. And in fact, I will be doing that, this is the first time I'm doing something like this, I'll be doing that in a joint conversation with Doug Jensen, uh, who I've come to know and like very much, and who clearly knows an awful lot more about the FS5 and the FS7 than I do. Uh, but we're both looking forward to it. It's going to be a very interesting combination of perspectives as we take you through the Sony RAW upgrade. Today, I'm going to talk about the Zacuto gear that makes it all hang together. Now, if you want to get into detail about each piece in this rig, please read the blog post. I go into tremendous detail there. But let me give you the headline on Zacuto. Their gear is built like a tank. Four tanks, really the higher end of dedicated video cameras, whether it's the Cinema EOS series, uh, the higher end Sony starting with the FS5 and going right up through the 55, whatever you want, Reds, Arri, I mean this stuff is just industrial strength. And second part of the headline, it's priced that way. The third part of the headline, there are only four parts, the third part of the headline is that sometimes that robustness comes at the expense of ease of use, but for its intended audience, who cares if you have to take a couple of extra minutes to really torque up using a hex screw, the riser in the base plate? Because once it's locked in, it's locked in. It's not like you're going to change it two minutes later. Uh, but there are some interesting design trade-offs uh, around the robustness where sometimes a lever may get in the way of another lever. That happens. Uh, we'll get into more details about that. And then the fourth part of the headline, it would be a really crappy headline if this were it, but the fourth part of the quick summary is that the market is changing and the things that made it possible for Zacuto to get to this point where it is a highly regarded made in America uh, accessories manufacturer will not be the same things going forward. And Zacuto is already responding to that. So let's talk about that. There are really a couple of things that have changed over the last several years. Of course, we all remember uh, what happened back in 2008, 2009, when Canon released the 5D Mark II. And that started the DSLR video revolution. No need to go into details. But because these were DSLRs and they didn't have exposure assists, focus assists, there was a moment in time where add-ons like a magnifying loop, which is how I first came to Zacuto personally, were must-have accessories. So back in the day I got the Zacuto oh, uh, Z Finder Pro and my focus improved dramatically. Except I quickly learned that my focus was limited to or gated by that rear LCD panel. And I still didn't have focus assists like peaking. I still didn't have exposure assists. I still didn't have audio meters. Well, yeah, I did because I used Magic Lantern. But in the middle of a shoot when you've got to switch cards and you've got Magic Lantern on them, for me it wasn't optimal. So I ended up getting their EVF which was a dramatic improvement. So that was a window and Zacuto took advantage of it. Really very cool. But then almost as quickly, mirrorless arrived. And with it, built-in EVFs, built-in focus assists, including magnification, 
built-in exposure assists. And all of a sudden, it made more sense for people like me just to switch to mirrorless. I tried the mirrorless switch once with the Panasonic GH2. I already saw that it had superior image quality. I didn't like the way it felt in my hands. I was still used to the Canon, so I ended up selling it. But a few years later, I switched to Sony. I'm not looking back. And in fact, as many of you already know, this is being recorded with a Sony A6300. And that's the real inflection point which takes us to where we are today. Because not only did the need for separate EVF in this mirrorless and DSLR hybrid wor uh, world uh, diminish, but the expectations for size, weight, and cost changed for that large segment. Now, one other thing that was happening at the same time is that offshore manufacturers were bringing in cheap, I'll call it Erector Set, Lego Set, Zacuto calls it universal uh, accessories where you can pretty much screw together whatever configuration you want. Uh, and while the quality wasn't there, the cost was so low that it actually began to make more sense for people in the hybrid stills video world to look toward that less expensive stuff because the matte boxes weren't so big and the follow focuses weren't so big. But Zacuto continued to price premium and the build quality, the payload capacities warranted it. And yet the pressure from offshore continues to build. The quality has gotten better over time. It's getting more robust over time. And while imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, uh, what I see, and maybe you see the same thing, is that offshore companies are beginning to show real innovation. I think that forces an American manufacturer like Zacuto, as with so many other American manufacturers in other sectors, to move up the value added chain. And that's why the Zacuto I is so interesting to me. It is the third member, what I will call the mama bear of the Gradical family. It's mid-price between the original Gradical and the Gradical HD. It is fully featured from a software perspective. The exposure assists, the focus assists, the waveforms, the vector scopes, uh, the LUTs that the original Gradical all had and that the HD could be upgraded with. It's already there at $1,950, so a mid-price point with full functionality. But in order to make that happen, in other words, in order to be able to respond to the market and come down with premium but lower premium pricing, they decontented the physical unit, not the software, but the physical unit. There's no battery on the Gradical I. So you need to have a battery with a DTAP, like the Anton Bauer CNA 150, which you saw at the beginning of this segment. Uh, they got rid of all the physical switches. And now they have, even better than an iPhone, just one button. That's it. Not even on off. Heck with it. But that one button is not actually a button. It is a joystick. And that joystick just knifes through the menu system, which is very well organized, very logical, so logical and so intuitive that for the first time, I actually was encouraged to pick a LUT and see the result immediately. And that's pretty impressive for someone like me who really doesn't play in this space. It was that easy. The second part of moving up the design chain is the industrial design. It's beautiful and it's distinctive. I don't know if you think it looks more like the robot in Fritz Lang's 1927 silent film masterpiece Metropolis or more recently, although it's I think 30 something years now, the Empire Strikes Back and it looks like a Death Star or going back to the 1950s, maybe you think it looks a little bit more like uh, a drive-in movie theater's squawk box, speakers for the cars. 
But again, that's what makes this interesting to me. Zakudo traditionally has been what so much of the gear that this rigging consists of now has always been. Robust, solid, smooth, expensive. But that's not their future. The future is having high value add products like this eye, which not only are richly functional, but have strong, intuitive user interfaces and strong, appealing industrial design. I expect that we will see more of that. If we take, for example, the current VCT universal base plate, again, I don't know how many ways I can say it's built like a tank. However, there are things about it which make it not easy. And at the price that Zakudo is charging, you expect that people have actually used this stuff in the field and come back and given Zakudo feedback. In fact, that's what's happened. And Zakudo showed off a revised VCT universal base plate uh, at NAB 2016 that's supposed to come out this summer. Mm, summer's rapidly getting to an end, but I'd really like to see that because it appears to me that this revised base plate addresses several of the issues. In fact, all of the issues that I had with the uh, VCT uh, base plate uh, during my working with it this time around. So again, I encourage you to read the blog post, get into detail. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, I'm sorry, I can't resist. Kudos to the kudos because they really appear to be stepping up and doing what they need to do to remain a premier American manufacturer. And not to be jingoistic, that's not what this is about at all, but rather it's an acknowledgement that they are choosing to be a productive member of their community uh, in, in which they operate. And I think that's a good thing no matter where in the world you happen to be. So there you have it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time. You know the drill. If you like what you've seen here, subscribe, like. Please do go over to the blog. Uh, I also always look forward to your comments, uh, especially on YouTube, in fact. So please, if you have thoughts that you'd like to share, if you have information that you'd like to give, I'd love to see it. I always learn from you guys. And uh, ciao.